up everyone so i'm gonna give an update of my day two progression uh really quickly it's very late over at my here already and i still have work tomorrow probably if my wife see this she's gonna scold me but okay nonetheless i gotta do it okay i uh first of all i, I probably won't be streaming during the weekdays um because i am working and usually you know after i come back i only have like two hours or so to actually really play the game otherwise it's just pub warrior time so i don't really have much time to play and i just want to relax and enjoy okay so i i won't be streaming um and on top of that um i will not be streaming also because i want to try and convert everything to be using youtube only okay um that will be updated <clears throat> along the way okay so progression wise i have completed okay i wouldn't say all of the yellow maps okay but i will say almost everything okay almost everything uh oh yes there's one more <laughs> there's one more i need to do before i close this off uh, basically the academy okay but yeah you can see i have almost completed every single yellow map um, yellow tier map except for tier 10 i i still need some of them yeah while doing this let's just see if i can get lucky oh i got lucky <laughs> what the heck okay okay i got lucky so yeah i just need these two and a few more and i'm actually done with the yellow tier maps um tomorrow i'll be progressing onto the red and then i'll see how well this build actually fares in red because that's the real the real dilemma and the real problem right Okay, nonetheless, I'm at 72, 115. I think it's a pretty slow but good progression. Okay, um, something that I want to mention is, I have mentioned this in my video yesterday, that I did not took the route of the usual streamers. Like, you know, you got to take all of these connecting notes here that gives you what chance for one monster in each of my map to draw additional collector map. I did not take that at all. Okay. Ever since from the beginning, the first four notes I took was June, right? 40% chance to contain June. I think this is a super good addition. Um, it gives you like a betrayal every once, every two map. It gives you tons of EXP. It allows you to have uh, the crafting, revealing the crafting options. It gives you rare items that can give you life and resist very easily so that you can change your gears without actually needing to go to the market to buy while progressing to the endless as well really good uh, time saving efficient method okay and then right after that i straight skip to blight immediately immediately i went for blight straight okay so that's why you can see the full circle is here of course i only took like this too and then i spec straight up to here first which is fungal bloom so that i have 100 percent chance to contain blight and what i did afterwards was i took this uh immune response and the uh, blight tower cost okay now this one is uh yeah i i took this first and right afterwards i took cassia sprite and the rest of the notes here okay so literally i went straight for this that's the first thing i went and i i, I did not regret okay i tell you it's so good first of all it drops staple currencies which you need it along the way as a leak starter it is you don't have those small staple currencies and you'll be consistently using it and you know to buy maps um to roll your flask to roll for some equipments to upgrade your equipment so on and so forth this blight just completely um give you all of the necessary items okay on top of that there's so many loots um i gotten a lot of maps from blight as well uh, essence as well and it gives a lot of exp okay just by playing tower defense you don't really need your character to be very strong you just need to scale and know what are tower to build so let's say if there is a lightning immunity uh portal blight portal all you need to do is just build fire okay and if you see fire then build minion okay i, I would say the minion tower is probably the most the, the strongest um, because it's range so it, it kind of like it's not only 
like you know when you build the lightning and the burning or, or flamethrower tower it only like helps you to to what is that to defend that single line of lane okay but for the minion range it helps you protect a very big area so that's why i i really love it okay um and then yes uh moving continuing on with this i took this whole entire bar this whole circle is not updated on the PoE planner okay just so you guys know and that's why i decided to took the whole entire circle because it's going to give you a lot more um blight rewards right so what i did was this and right afterwards right afterwards what i did was i spec upwards okay i took upwards all the way to unwavering vision okay when i have unwavering vision what i did was i added this three notes here okay and then i took um here as well chance to get nico i took this shaping the mountains and i took this pack of energy so it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen um and then that's like 16 17 18 i think 19 20 yeah 19 and 20 okay so i, I literally took this yep straight up i took this okay so that i i can have like 50 percent chance to get one tier higher maps because by this stage i am at about just starting yellow tier maps so it's gonna get a little bit more difficult and then uh nico and this thing just helps me along the way pushes a lot very well and to get 100 percent chance on nico that's where i spec four more points upwards here um don't you don't really need to take this doom spirit okay so doom spirit what it does is it's kind of like a small little aura that's below the sulfide veins and when you click the sulfide veins this doom spirit will basically gives you random stuff like strong box shrine um the what's the tormented spirits there's a lot of things that it can give you it's just very random and i don't feel it's needed all right um and once i've gotten this already what i did was i took more of the black rewards which is literally what you see here okay i just took more of the black rewards all here and then now i have the oil extractor by then you'll be like yellow tier map so you get a lot more rewarding currencies and maps and just a lot more stuff right so this is where i stop at um for my next progression, what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to spec into um, Searing Exarch and I I really don't know what I'm going to do because this is literally all I need. Oh yes, probably the center over here which uh, gives you one map higher because when you reach red tier maps, it's going to get harder to get maps. So yeah, yeah probably this, I just spec downwards here. Right, so this was my strategy to progress the Atlas. Um, as for the Necropolis League mechanic, I meddle with it a little bit and I I, I feel it's, it's garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but I feel it's garbage because first of all, you have only 64 slots, so you 64 cops you can store. So you need to carefully know what you want to craft, what is required. Um, and uh, you got to store only those that is needed for your build. Okay um secondly you take too much time to craft one single item in the in the necropolis lake mechanic i literally like went through my whole 64 list of cops trying to see how i can craft a freaking boots for this coc character and what i literally need was like spell oh um this is not a correct one but what you literally need is like live spell suppress one resistance and then the movement speed i can craft that's all I took 10 to 15 minutes just to go through all of my cops and see what is the best, how I can reach the high tier of life, high tier of resistance. And after finishing everything, the boots did not even came out what I wanted. <laughs> so it was like garbage, garbage. It's not even... Okay, it can be a little bit of deterministic crafting, but I think that got to come later on when you have better cops to craft. Okay, so for now... I would suggest don't meddle with the mechanic first. Let those uh, mainstream streamers 
uh, feed us information on what we should do. Right, I don't have time for that, so I'll leave it to the bigger boys to do it. <laughs> and uh, I would say June is really very good. Okay, so for those of you that do not know, I have added in um, this cheat sheet. Okay, on my notebook, uh, you can just see it's just beside it. Um, basically, it, there's a lot of changes to Betrayal. And those in bold are basically what you're gonna take. Okay? Uh for those of you that do not know, whenever you whenever you go to betrayer and then you fight those uh mini bosses, right? The one on the right side, I think is damn it, I can't remember. So whenever you, you click the portrait, you it will show the investigation side, right? And then you gotta click either the center is released. The right is you drop something, upgrade or whichever is on the right. And then the left side, I think it's either interrogate or prison the person, okay? So basically, if the uh, if the character is not in the division or the department that, that you need him to. So let's say for example, if on your board, Aaron is fortification, okay? For example... Okay, what you need to do is you just need to click the left side, which is I, I can't remember is it what's the what's the word or name called? Is it interrogate or no it's not interrogate? Um basically the left the left button on the left side helps you to prison the person. Okay, and when he is released, he will have a chance to go to another division. So that's so that's how you keep rings and repeat until they land up in the same place. So when they land out in the same place, you just got to upgrade their ranks. Um, if there is a note that shows they will be transported to another division, you can just release them, which is the center button, and they will stay put in the same position. Right, so, uh, yeah, notebook, uh, I mean the Betrayal cheat sheet is in my notebook. Other than that, um, I think this build is really very solid as of now. Okay, I haven't done all of the unique maps as well. There are some of them, thanks to my friend that invited me also. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping to complete the red tier maps by maybe two more or the day after. And I'm going to just start farming as much as I can. I really want to try harvest as well because harvest changes are there. I heard that skittering daily ops are no longer farmable because each layer only gives you one scare, which is fucking pathetic, I'm sorry. What else is there? What else is there? Okay, I can't really remember. But all I know is, I think there, there is a method to actually farm influence. Um, it's called influence farming, okay? Basically, what what is the idea behind that, right? Is I haven't released it yet, but I think I will probably be doing it. Where is the scarabs? Yeah. Basically, you see this? Scarab of Monstrous lineage you're gonna take use this um when you are doing influence like ito or war or saving and such a lot of monsters will be magic this is gonna boost them up a lot and then you're gonna take the influence do i not have that okay it's one of them here it's one of them here basically it gives you another 40 percent to influence modifiers okay and not only that because there are so many ways to drop scarabs now. I think this 40% increased magic pet size is going to help you in um, getting more scarabs also, as well as harvest. Okay. As of now, I know harvest is rare. The scarabs are rare. Quite rare. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, we really see how it goes. But I think... I really still don't know what I'll farm now. But for the beginning, I'll just continue to farm Blight. Okay, next I want to talk about is the mid-budget for COC. Um, I don't think I'll be able to complete it very fast. Okay, I'll be I'll be brutally honest. I don't think I'll be able to complete it very fast. And I really have a lot of personal matters to settle in real life right now. So, I'm kind of like taking a day, a few days off. Plus, work is going to get very busy for me. It's kind of like the end of the financial year. So... It's really, really very busy. Um, but what I can say is do expect the mid-budget to be up by next weekend. 
okay i will try i'll try my best to finish the mid budget because i need to transit as well right um my objective is probably to farm up to 10 divines okay hopefully honestly i don't think it's difficult i can probably farm it by like wednesday or thursday if i am playing for like three hours every day should be fine it should be fine and then um i will take one day to be a pob warrior to do up the mid budget and i i'm very sure i'm gonna play the block version okay so look forward to it the block version mid budget i will try my best to manage it and then from then onwards the high budget is going to come much later okay because i have said this many times i always expect the mid budget to be able to at least farm decently well okay even in like daily mems okay it should be good enough all right so i hope you guys are enjoying the league i see that many there are actually quite a few players that are complaining here and there it's quite crazy quite buggy uh, some of the new meta builds are very clunky here and there, but guys, come on, this is part of PoE. Adventurous exploration, learning new stuff, blah, blah, blah. Just enjoy the game. Relax and enjoy the game. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.